So welcome back to Water Power Planet everyone. In today's video we're going to talk about electricity again. We're going to talk about the electron. It's negative electrical charge. Talk about some pictures we got in here. So you're not going anywhere without the electricity. Most of you guys got your bubblers down, you got your reactors together, you got your particle decelerators and your scrubbers. But you're going to need more than that. You got your torches down. What about the electrical power? How are you going to power all this stuff? Even a Hoffman apparatus, you're going to need electrical power. So I've been looking back at these past images and I always thought when I looked at this, it looks like a bridge rectifier. A full wave bridge rectifier on top of a big insulator. It's got those symbols for electromagnetic radiation. And it's showing you that you can sustain a plasma. And that's very important with electricity. Think about this. That's basically all the gas is when you break the water apart. You have the two atomic gas atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. It's probably the most important piece of the game. Something to think about. So we're going to talk about electricity today and why it's so important. It has a lot to do with resistance. If it wasn't for resistance, it'd be too easy, guys. This would be too easy to do. I'm going to talk about electrical power induction here. We've got a neodymium magnet in there and a copper coil. This makes electrical power when it goes up and down. So we're going to work on that. But we're going to talk about metals today. Different kinds. What's the best to use? What's the best electrode? Ohm's Law. Go back and read this. It's all about resistance. Now we've, there's a lot of Cadillac ideas out there. We've built all kinds of fuel cells. All kinds of ideas. Think about it. No, but the good stuff's being held back. No, you're going to need money on this one. We're not going to go cheap. We're going to spend some money. No, we're going to need gold, platinum, silver, palladium. Some of the more expensive metals. Think about it. If you want to keep that water clear and you want to build a fuel cell that lasts forever. Now you've already got enough fuel to travel across the galaxy ten times over. Fuel's no longer our concern. We're worried about the electricity now. So we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to build fuel cells that cost a little more money. Now these guys have been holding back on us. They've got all this stuff. They've mined it out of the ground. And then they put it in cages again and boxed it up. Put it behind iron doors and you can't get to this stuff. But those of us that can afford it, we're going to get some better electrodes. We're going to build some fuel cells that cost over a thousand dollars. We're going to build some cheaper ones too. So hold on tight. So I know right about now you're probably hyperventilating. You're thinking that you need all this gold, silver, and platinum to build the next fuel cell. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're not going to need thousands of dollars. Because these sheep ain't got no money after all this bullshit they've been through. Are you kidding? No, they need to take these blinders off. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. Now there's a secret. There's a way to get to the electricity. And make it very efficient. So what we're gonna do here. It's not like these sheep got some oil well in the Middle East they just tap into. They got platinum just stacked up around the house. So what you can use is 316L. Now this is important. This this type of stainless steel is very valuable. It's got mobidium in it. Okay, this is element number 42, and it's very important. This is what makes it so tough, so hard. You no, know, it can handle the harsh environments. 
You can see it's right there in between nobidium and technetium. Look at that. So it's going to make your stainless steel a lot more valuable and your fuel cell a lot more efficient. You won't have any corrosion. It's more resistant. You want to put that on your anode side for sure. If you want to avoid that rust, something to think about. Now it's all about the electricity, passing the electrons and resistance. Now these heavier metals, they're more expensive and you get what you pay for in this world. Think about it. There's a lot of elements on that table of elements that cost a lot of money. You know, you would have zero maintenance on your fuel cell. Think about that. You know, you could reach the hydrogen and the oxygen at enormous speeds. It would cost you very little electrical power. Now, see, so you'll see this kind of stainless steel on high-end Japanese knives, high-end watches, and I'll show you how to test for it. See, it barely sticks to the magnet. See, two fingers, barely sticks. See, here's carbon fiber. You're going to pay a lot more for this, but it's worth it. Now, carbon fiber is cool, but this will, this will corrode. It will disappear. It will fall apart. This is what I use over here all the time, and I show you guys in my videos. Carbon fiber electrodes. I get those from them lantern batteries, and they work really well. They have almost no resistance. They're excellent, but that anode's going to corrode. That's what this is all about. And here's the cheap China stainless. You want to stay away from this stuff. No, literally, cheap knives, cheap kitchen stuff, cheap wall plates. Now these 316 wall plates are getting a little harder to find nowadays. But they're replacing them with these cheap iron ones. Look. See, it sticks right to it. There's a lot of iron in there. Very little mobidium. It's going to rust like hell. And of course you have silverware. This is high-end stuff right here. This is Cornell. I don't know if you can see it on there, if I can zoom in on it. Now this is high-end stuff right here. But it's mixed with other metals. See, it's very hard to get pure metals off this table of elements. But we'll move on. And the idea of having the pure elements and the better stuff and to put more money into your fuel cell because it's more efficient. There'd be no maintenance, less corrosion. Be extremely powerful. You can produce the gas at enormous rates with very little electrical power consumed. And don't forget, you always have your connections. Sometimes they're not made out of the same metal you used your plates. Just like over here, if I was to stick these alligator clips in the water, they'd become part of the process. Get out of here, some damn fly. I'll turn it on to show you. So you can see the anode running right there, and that will corrode, that will fall apart eventually. That's your positive side, you always got to remember that. Now the negative side, you can get away with all these metals. Everything you see here, you could use the silver spoon, all this stuff, the fork, the cheap china. No, it'll be there a thousand years from now when you pull it out. It'll look better than when you put it in there. It's the other side that corrodes. And I like to do it like this because it shows you guys you can pull the water apart, the ions, in a physical manner. Alright, well here, maybe this is the best way to explain it. You don't want to go with the cheap metals. You want to try to get something that costs a little more. You at least go with the 316L. Because you know why? Your anode is going to be completely destroyed. No, it's going to be corroded. It's going to rust. It's going to fall apart. It's the most important thing. Think of it, think of it like some sacrificial lamb. It's been captured by the Illuminati. Think about this. It's going to be put to the flames. Well, maybe not exactly like that, but you get the idea. You want to protect your anode. You want to have something that lasts. You no, know, it takes one treasure to reach another one. Think about this. It's where the real treasure's at, ladies and gentlemen. 
So we're going to go in here and we're going to talk about this today. Resistance. So the Hoffman apparatus. I just sketched one out real quick right here. This is what separates the hydrogen and the oxygen. Let me turn this on here real quick. So the anode is very important. You want to have inert materials over there if you can afford it. And then there's no maintenance. It's a little difficult though to get your hands on that platinum or pure silver. Carbon fiber is a lot cheaper. Gold is expensive. It's all about that electricity passing through those metals. So you want to go with the 316L. That's what this video is about. It's affordable, costs a little more money, but it's got that molybdenum in it. It's going to make it a lot more rust resistant, a lot tougher. It can handle the environment in the electrolysis cell. It's something to keep in mind, one treasure to reach another. So these non-renewables are making their moves, guys. You want to pay attention. It's what's inside that counts. I'm uploading the quantum data right now for future fuel cells. 